In this video, I'll cover basic artwork setup for printing with the Brother Garment Printer. Using Adobe Photoshop Creative Cloud. I'm using GTX Driver version 2.5. Let's start with a simple file. Let's go File, Open. And I'm going to choose a, my JPEG here on my desktop named Rosie. One of the first things we want to look at is what color mode is our file in. If you look up here in the top left corner, you'll see that my file is called rosy.jpg. I'm zoomed in at 40.8% and my color mode here is listed as RGB. If your file is not already set to RGB, go to Image, Mode, and click on RGB. Next, we also need to check our image size. Again, we go back to Image, Image Size, and for me, I'm going to make mine the width of 11. Set my resolution to 300 dpi. And if you look over here to the left hand side, I'll zoom in. If I click and hold the mouse, you'll see this is the before and this is the after. Before, after. Let's click OK. So here is our image. If you hold down the space bar, it gives you a little hand option. So you can click and drag it. Let's zoom out just a little bit. Now let's look at our layer palette. On the right hand side you'll notice it says background in italics with a small little lock. The background layer is the bottommost layer in the layers palette. The background layer is always locked, meaning you cannot change its stacking order, blend mode, or opacity unless you convert it to a regular layer. To do this, we can right click on the layer and choose layer from background. I'm going to name my layer artwork. and click OK. As you can see, my image is on a flattened gray background. It is always best to set up your artwork on a transparent background, so it can be printed on a wide range of garments. So I'm going to need to remove this background from my image. For this, I'll choose the Magic Wand tool from the Tools palette on the left-hand side. If you don't see this option, click and hold, and this little flyout menu will appear. Choose Magic Wand. You can see at the top we have a couple different options. Tolerance, Anti-Alias, and Contiguous. Let me give you a brief explanation of what Anti-Alias is. Anti-Alias is a technique of blending bitmap based images and text to reduce stair-stepped or jagged appearance. In areas of transition, the edge pixels are blended to give a smoother appearance. Anti-alias is acceptable inside the image, but can cause printing issues along the outer edges of your image, especially when you print directly from Photoshop to your garment printer. The printer will see these pixels and try and lay down 100% white ink underneath those areas in order to capture every single pixel of color within the image. What ends up happening is that suddenly you'll have a white halo around your image instead of a nice, crisp, clean line. The next option is Contiguous. Contiguous option basically means touching or related. When I click on an area in my image, using the Magic Wand tool, you'll see that I only got this top section. You can tell what's selected by what's called Marching Ants. So I got this top section here, and you notice it didn't cross over into these areas. Well, if I uncheck Mark Contiguous, click once again, you'll see that it selected everything from the inside of the A's to the inside of my graphic. 
but you'll notice if I zoom in, go to my zoom tool, Let's recenter it here. Hold down the space bar. Click and drag. Go back to my magic wand tool. And you see I didn't get quite to the edge of my text. What we can do now is increase our tolerance. If you notice, my magic wand has a plus symbol. This means we can add to our selection. You can either do this by pressing the button in the top left corner or hold down the shift key. So I'll click once, click again. That's much better. I've got a lot more of my gray area selected. Now we need to modify our selection. I need to go to the select menu, then to modify and expand. My goal is to push these marching ants slightly into my image. This will help trim away any excess gray around the edges. Let's start with one pixel. Click OK. And see how it just slightly moved into my image. Now let's press the delete key on your keyboard. You'll notice I now have a checkerboard pattern which means in Photoshop this is now transparent. Let's create a new layer so you can see what I mean. First let's deselect our selection. So go to select, deselect. Now we can move to our layers palette. You can create a new layer in a couple different ways. One is by clicking on the paper icon in the bottom right hand corner or you can go to the Layers menu, New, Layer. Let's call this layer Shirt Color. And press OK. Now let's click and drag the Shirt Color layer below Artwork. Now let's fill the Shirt Color layer with an actual color. So let's go to Edit, Fill. You can either choose the basics black, white, or gray, or you can choose a custom color by clicking here. So you could choose a red, blues, pinks, or greens. So let's choose maybe a really dark blue. Again, this is not for printing, just for a visual representation. Now this gives me an idea of how my artwork will look on a blue garment. By clicking on the small eyeball on this layer, you can actually hide it temporarily. Now I need to convert all RGB 255 white within the artwork layer to 254. The printer will not recognize RGB 255 as a color and will not print those areas. If we want to check to see if there's any 255 white within our actual image, we can grab our eyedropper tool. I'm going to move down towards her eye here. If you notice with the eyedropper tool, if I click here, you notice my values on the right hand side change. I'm taking a sample of that color. So if I click in her eye, it's 255. But to modify this layer, we need to go back and click Artwork. This will make this our active layer for when we make changes. The simplest way to change this from 255 to 254 is for us to go to Image, Adjustments, Levels. And we'll want to change our output levels to 254. This is going to add a small drop of color to those white areas. Click OK. If you like, you can check again with the eyedropper tool. So go from 255, click, 254. 
It is also a good idea to check to make sure all your dark areas, like the black of her eyes, is a solid RGB black. So if we click here, and we look up here in our color palette, it is a nice solid 0, 0, 0. If your dark areas are not a solid black, please refer to our video on color matching and color replacement. Now let's zoom out and save our file. Go to File, Save As. I prefer to save as a Photoshop file if I want to go back and edit something later. So I'll go ahead and save this as rosy.psd. Click Save. And now we can go to File Print. I will select Brother GTX4 file output for the purpose of this video. Click on the printer settings to adjust the print driver settings. You can choose the platen size, and for me, I'm going to choose the basic 14 by 16 platen. I'll choose color plus white ink to print on a colored shirt. You can select the highlight and mask setting that is right for your type of garment. I am going to leave mine on the default settings. What is nice, if you hover over the different items, it will give you a description of what it does at the bottom. Press OK, then click Print. Here is my ARX4 file. It's always best to do a ARX4 file to check your work before you commit the ink to the actual shirt. You can change the background color temporarily to view what your image would look like on a different color t-shirt. This is temporary and will not actually print the background color. You can click on the details button if you want to see more detailed information about the file. If I'm happy with the results, I can click save. I will save mine on the desktop. Now if I go to my desktop and double click on my file, it will bring up the following window. I can press the Send to Printer button to send it directly to my garment printer, either by USB or by LAN. Or I can save my file to a USB flash drive and upload it directly at the printer. If you need additional support, please fill out our web form at brotherdtg.com forward slash help for further assistance.